ICT investment holding company Business Connection Group. Of course, it's pushing ahead with its vision of a simplified information, communication and technology workspace. The company recently offered to buy a 50% plus one share in Dusty Moon Investments for 240 million rand. This will give it access to a number of companies that operate in the managed print services market. Business connection market cap 1.9 billion, price earnings 16.8, dividend yield 4.7, not a bad dividend yield. Keith, let's come to you first. The UCS deal, which is a done deal, there was a nice arbitrage there, but that's now all gone. How much of a big deal is it for business connection? Is it a game changer or is it a, a bolt on which kind of beefs them up, but not really a game changer? Well, let me phrase that in this way. With uh, the Kanoa Group, which was uh, Dusty Moon, but we let's call it Kanoa Group. Yeah. Uh, Kanoa Group and UCS, in one year, a business connection basically doubled its size. Uh, and UC, UCS services cluster was the majority of that. So fairly significant. Also taking them a lot into the retail space, which is, a, I know UCS, a lot of uh, point of sale presence, etc. A, 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 new, a new move for them, the HR, uh, uh, payroll stuff as well, software for small companies. Absolutely, very, very nationally. UCS uh, uh, has been strong in uh, the the retail sector. This brings a, a much, much more retail orientated uh, approach to, to the overall business connection group and allows actually a fair amount of cross selling of both technologies and between clients and the, uh, leveraging the platform, which is which uh, the big platform, like uh, you guys call it data centers, guys call it uh, uh, yeah, cloud computing. Yeah. It's largely the same thing if you, if you sell it the same and way. And it seems that's the way to go. But looking at the operating margins of the company, we know that it's come down significantly from 6.1% to 2.1%. Given the fact that it is delving in perhaps a relatively new space, do you think that it could bring margins back up to the previous number? Well, first of all, those margins are historic. The UCS uh, business uh, historically has a much higher return on the equity and a much higher margin. So when that get fully, uh, gets fully accounted in this current fi financial year, it's only got four months of that yeah. in there. So what number when you say historically much better numbers, what are we looking at going forward? We're looking at uh, in, in the teens. Okay. Looking at it in the teens, so that uh, and uh, the UCS services cluster. When it depends how it, how it operates going forward and what synergies they can extract, but you're mm -hmm. looking at about a quarter of the group's profits as well coming from that. So it should definitely raise things like a margins and return on equity. Okay, so time now to take a look at the technical side of things, and as promised, we've got Warren Peacock standing by for a technical look at the market. So Simon, uh, just over to you uh, quickly. When you see some of the fundamental aspects when it comes to the company, we're seeing weaknesses, we're seeing some pluses, but the technical graphs telling us that we're seeing pressure coming through in the stock market. Yeah, and what's what I like about the chart is it, it you know, pictures a thousand words, gives you a nice clean picture in that sense. Warren, let's come to you. Uh, what, what Certainly what we're seeing with business connection is we're seeing a price that's come down fairly significantly. Uh, you, you're saying broken support at, 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 at 494, kind of hovering just below it. Are we looking, would you look forward to potentially still go lower? I would be looking for it to come back to about 442. Uh, if it finds support there, then there might be a, an opportunity for, the, for it to move up. It has been sold off heavily. Uh, we've had that really strong trend downwards. We've got some support on the short term, uh, but still below the longer term. That support, it was support. a 494, which it's kind of pierced, but hovering, sorry, four, four, yeah, 494, broken yeah. it, but kind of hovering below. Yeah, I mean, it's made a new support line, but on the really short term, I wouldn't take it too seriously. It's a long term chart. Uh, I would be looking forward to come to about 442 and obviously if it breaks that when we go right back to, to around the three rand level. Okay, so perhaps two things that are happening there. I mean, when you look at the pressure that has come to the fore, uh, we're starting to see a bit of negative sentiment uh, with uh, a business connection. Or do you think that it's just showing that the company is in value territory, Simon? Always the hard part. And then yeah. the question comes in, I mean, at this point, looking at the chart, do you jump in now or do you say, hey, it's looking like some weakness and let's <coughs> look for that weakness to come in and rather go jumping around it at that 442, maybe the 450 preempted, yeah. but at 480 overpaying. Keith, I want to come back to, to, to cloud, data centers, call them what you will. We've talked them about, they, they, they are very much the future. You don't have your data remotely anymore. Uh, and it's happening. It's not just the big companies. It's even the Gmails, et cetera, of the world. But what's the, what's the edge there? What's the, 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 the critical thing? I mean, in, in one part, we've got companies like ISA who say, you know what, we're going to sell you the, the, the security around it. How comes that, that edge? I mean, surely I mean, me and you can go buy some hard drives and create a cloud, or is it a little more complicated? Scalability. Scalability and, and uh, well, there's, there's actually a couple of aspects. We have scalability, you have to have sufficient size. Um, credibility, uh, because you're trading reputation. I mean, if your cloud gets hacked, uh, 
say goodbye not just to the client who got hacked, but all your clients. You know, uh, if your if your cloud goes down, your data center goes down. You know, you actually um, you can start to pile up the losses. So it's uh, scalability, credibility, and then uh, there's also a much more subtle one: latency. Um, you've got to be, you've got to have sufficient uh, network access or be uh, near enough to clients. So when I click, it happens. Yes. It doesn't click and I mean, it becomes the worldwide wait. Absolutely. If, if you click and you wait a second, it doesn't sound like much. But if you're processing hundreds of thousands of uh, SAP journals every second or maybe even every day, you know, that second adds up and it, uh, it directly impacts on your efficiency in that business and that's obviously impacts on costs. Well, Keith, oh, you also mentioned something very interesting when it comes to security and we've actually started to see a lot of security breaches globally with big companies as well. So it's all about trust. Do you think that the market would be convinced with the likes of Business Connections because uh, connection, this is not the only company that is going to be uh, focusing on the cloud. There's a lot of other providers. Well, th there is a worry in my mind that, I mean, cloud is an open secret. Guys, know this is this is the way the ICT model is going. So there's an open there, there's there's a worry starting to uh, sort of nag me at the back of my mind. Maybe a supply down the line. Um, you know, you built up all this data center space, but that said, the the good guys will still capture it. Um, and in business connections, a place that they're selling into Africa, they actually have a very nice uh, footprint across Africa, and that's particularly useful. Um, given Africa's under, under investment in technology. You know, you go, you try to sell cloud computing to guys in America, you have to migrate them off their current infrastructure onto yours. You sell it into Africa, there is no current infrastructure. You can just rock up yeah. and say, you know, plug in, we give you a SAP, access, we give you this, payroll. Make and, it sound so easy. Exactly, it is. <laughs> but it is. All you need is internet connection. It, it comes to that, that, that oversupply and that capacity. And then one of the things, when, I, when I'm going through BCX and I keep on, you know, what is their edge? They, they've got a lot of annuity income, so obviously to a degree it's relationships. They've got the, the, the products they got from UCS, Access and others like that, really, really good stuff. In many cases in the IT space, your edge is staff who are expensive and mobile. Well, if you built a data center, the interesting aspect, that changes a little bit because your data center isn't mobile. Um, uh, whereas you can start to source staff internationally. And you know, there's, there's arguments that cloud computing, the traditional RCT services model, yes. Um, you know, your labor mobility is a major pain. Um, cloud computing may not actually end up to be that much. I, I want to go back to, to, to Warren, a, a quick question on the 442 level. I was commenting that uh, uh, you know, by there. As a, as a, as a trader, do you, do you wait for the 442 to hold? Do you wait for it to break? Or is it a case of, of, of you know, kind of like you know, watching and feeling? How do you play it when it gets down to that sort of level? Uh, I would be looking for 442 either to hold or it must break above that 496 level, uh, previous support becoming resistance. And that's sort of what I'd be looking at. Okay, so gentlemen, I think crunch time. Uh, hot or not for the stock? I think Keith, let's start with you. Well, it's uh, what I see when I see that graph is it's simple. The results are very weak, um, and a lot of it has to do with uh, timing of revenues that are coming through in a, in a you know, late, later half and, and into the next financial year. And at the same time, you have a company that's evolving its business model as, as times are changing. Um, so the results surprised on the downside. It was disappointing. The market reacted. It's simple. It's uh, pessimism factoring into the, into the share price, but it's not necessarily reflective of the fair value. I remain contrarian. I like okay. this company. It's a, it's, so it's, it's hot for you. That was a long way to ah, say that was, it's hot. I was like, yes, <laughs> I was waiting for the keyword. Hot. So you're not seeing it as a value trap. You're seeing value. No, I like it. Simon. <clears throat> I, I, they've done a lot. I like the UCS deal. I think it's a great deal. Yeah. I think they've got some great products here. They've got great annuity. Keith talks about margins into the teens, all very nice. I want to start seeing it first. And, 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 and the chart's telling me that the market could probably be taking it. Okay, so if you're view. a chart man, uh, for you, uh, Warren, is it hot or not relative to what we're seeing on the technical aspect? I would be looking for it to break above that 496 before I, before I looked at it now. So in currently, not. So not hot for you? Not okay, really, no. So we've got... Well, I've, I've got to buy my stocks from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so let's delve into the next uh, stock. And still within the ICT sector, ICT Holdings Company, Gijima, recently bought the local business of US group BMC Business Service Management from African legend Indigo. BMC is a software service provider and its clients include 96% of the Forbes Global 100 and 81% of Fortune 500 companies. Uh, market cap of 530. 32 million, negative price earnings of 2.7, dividend yield 5.6. Keith, let's come to you. Is Who Am I Online, which was the, the uh, 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 home affairs um, problems that they had, call it what you will, does that still taint them? Is it going to continue to taint them? Or is that something they can say, 
either is behind them or will be behind them at one time? Well, there's, there's two major risks yeah, in, in my mind. The, the way they resolved that dispute was to fix the price of the contract. Yeah. Um, that instantly exposes Gajima to cost creep. It moves creep. that risk. It, it moves that risk and it exposes them to essentially cost creep on delivery of the remaining part. They have, a, a give, a, give or take, about a, a future cash cost of uh, about 80 million uh, on the delivery of that project. So that's the risk that it may actually end up to be more and they have to bear the brunt. Bear in mind that the writers from this contract, they wrote off half the equity with that. Yeah. One contract. Now that's contractual risk. Half the equity. But no, it, yeah. there was, sorry, there, there is another risk. The other risk is Gajim historically has gotten half the business from the public sector. You've yeah. just had a major, long, protracted dispute with your biggest client. Are you, and the question comes, are you going to get more and uh, yeah, short tender, tender flows in the future well, from the public sector? But, but, that's, but that's to the flip side of, of, of Jajima, and, and it's an important part, is that they, they, they're a very well credible BEE, uh, eighth most empowered company in the, out of the top 200 listed on the JSC according to recent surveys. They've certainly got that BEE, that helps, but I think you're right, they've tarnished the relationship, it's going to be difficult to win it back. It might have been one sector of government, but it's government. Absolutely. It's, uh, you know, largely these tenders are um, overseen by CETA. So yes, they may be for different government departments, but you're still actually dealing with basically the same uh, tender body. So that, that relationship that's gone through them is, is uh, in my mind, definitely at risk. It's quite fascinating because we, we talk about a lot of companies that are starting to get contracts from the public sector and we're saying it's a positive. And then sometimes we speak about companies saying they've been burnt by public uh, sector contracts or perhaps they've been too focused on government contracts and that has been their weakness or perhaps too focused on one single customer, whether it's be in the corporate arena or the public sector. Well, it's, so it's about yeah. balance, isn't a it? Absolutely. It's a, it, you, you look at uh, the quality of, of revenue stream. And one major thing that screams out, like uh, if you remember, uh, Eleni, we chatted about uh, those telemasters. They came out where one client was something like 20, 30 odd percent of their revenue, um, po possibly even more than a number escapes me. And that obviously screams risk. If, if, if that client goes south. And it was a short term client. Yeah, it was a short term client. That makes it even, even riskier. But in, in the same way, you know, the public sector should largely be viewed as one client. And I know, Keith, you're waiting with bated breath to see what the graphs are telling us. Yeah, Warren, I mean, what we can see here, I mean, a, a picture paints a thousand words, and this picture is going down. It's going down, uh, heading straight for that 78.6 uh, retracement, which is a really deep retracement. If it finds support there, uh, it would be heading back up to the top of the channel line. I mean, that channel is a 40 cent move. And that 78.6, that that's a Fibonacci? It is a Fibonacci number. Uh, like I said, deep retracement, I'd be looking for that to hold. So if, if it bounces off that, you, you would expect it to hold a bounce there, it could take it maybe to sort of the 90s? Well, I would expect it to at least get to the 75 level. At least to 75. Yeah. Strong down channel there. Okay, so more risk on the horizon, well, can we assume? I don't know so much. Uh, you know, that, that level there, that uh, 52 cents level is very important to me. Uh, I would find that as support. Okay. From there, the channel line and then of course uh, again to 123. Okay, fantastic. Uh, right. Keith, one of the things which happened is they, 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 got, they got their settlement etc. They big in the cloud space and I've got to say another IT company, another cloud. Uh, how many clouds? Do, I, mean, I know we're in the half hole up here, there's well, a lot of clouds. Ab absolutely, you, you, you see where it brings up that uh, sort of uh, worrying risk and maybe down the line there might actually be oversupply. That said, their approach to cloud has been very different from uh, Business Connections. Business Connection builds this massive data center and on sells it. Um, Gajima has been building modular clouds. So almost, it's almost, um, you know, if you view it just in the, in the scale, sc scale size and modular cloud is much more scalable. You manage your costs a bit better. Actually, I, I, I like okay. the idea, but business Let's connection has been much front. more, much more um, successful in this. So then, Keith, approach. a heavenly stock for you? <laughs> no, there's, there's, uh, there's a lot of downside risk in this company. There's something we don't touch. Writing off 75% of the equity, yeah. they breached loan covenants. That's, That's already awesome. you're at the mercy of your of your uh, financiers there. Um, there's a lot of downside risk. I don't believe it's it's, it's uh, markets fully accounted for that, and so we we actually currently have it as a sell. And I have not. to say, not hot. Okay, Simon. No, not hot. I, you know, I think all the issues we could rehash them, but that who am I in line? Government half your business, etc. Okay. So Warren, do you concur from a technical <laughs> aspect then, hot or not? Uh, probably not. Yet. Probably not. No. But there's that, a slight chance I hear in that your voice that 50, it could be. That 52 cents is critical. To me, if it breaks so that, watch then watch that, and if it breaks that, then more downside expected. Then definitely not. But if it hits resistance, then if it breaks up, 
Sure. So there's light at the end wow. of the tunnel. <laughs> We're all in agreement. <laughs> <laughs>